Hello, 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 and welcome to today's episode of Her Version. This podcast is dedicated to sharing stories of struggle and triumph, a platform that allows individuals to tell their truth in order to inspire and uplift others. For those of you that are new to this podcast and like content like this, make sure you share, like, and subscribe. I am your host, Sabrina Victoria. Let's jump right in. Hello, hello, hello. For those of you that are already jumping on live, I so appreciate you being here and, out and supporting us. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Her Version. The Her Version platform is built on storytelling and the understanding that many times our greatest learning experiences come from learning from other people's stories. Today, I am speaking with an amazing woman named Gita. Gita made a very emotional pivot in her life that led her to her passion. Once a successful scientist in the pharma industry with over 12 years of experience and now a well-established certified strategic abundance mindset coach and certified life and executive coach helping clients see clarity and positive changes in their personal and professional lives. Following her heart, not her pocketbook, Gita took a leap and had a trust in herself to be able to see succeed in an industry that was calling her name. Now, many years later, she is an expert in her field and is here to talk about the importance of trusting yourself and going for it. Welcome, Gita. You know, individuals who are thinking about personal development, they're here, they're listening, Mm -hmm. they're getting pulled, they're like, okay, I get it. I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand how to get from my darkness, my Mm -hmm. struggle Mm -hmm. to the light. What is the first? What am I supposed to do first? What's okay. the first step in your experience, in your journey? Mm-hmm. What were like the first one, two, threes that you took to go from one to the other? Okay. All right. Um, so I would call it that my three A's. So let me explain one by one. Okay. So number one was the hardest of all, which was just acknowledgement of it. So when you see you have have it all syndrome, I have, 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 have. And you don't know how to be in it. Be means the being. Then you have to acknowledge it first. Right? So acknowledgement of it, it might take a year for you. It might take five days or it might take 20 years. It's up to you. It's your, again, it's how you look at it. You know, or you or you need a, like somebody to help you out. Then, of course, we are there for that. But it's like acknowledgement of it just okay, something is shifting in me. What, what is it? Yeah. You know? And I want you to uh, literally go through that process. And if, like, for me, it was more so because being a scientist, I could write down my notes and see how it is working out for me. But if you don't want to do that, at least do something that you could just write something about it. Yeah. Because when you look back, you can always see what you what you had started your journey with. Because you should always enjoy the process of it, not the destination, where it's taking you. Definitely. Right. So if you can do that, that's a great practice. You know, just do something. Just write down, like, how and why are you feeling the way you are feeling, you know? Yeah. Why, why is it? Acknowledge it. So don't reject it, number one. Right. So for that, you have to be in very receptive mode. Now, why I talk about receptive mode, it's a very scientific term as well. Um, Because if you're not ready to receive the knowledge, because since I was working in lab for such a long time, so I knew how to take the information and process it. Right. So if you're not, if you don't, if you're not able to do that, the simplest way is just to take it down, just write it down, channelize it on the paper. Right. Yeah. Make it that that is very that is like it make it it's very personal to you. It's a very blueprint of you. So that's the first thing. Just acknowledgement. 
and just keep doing it please don't stop because i tell people be consistent you know you yeah. don't you don't have to stop somewhere it's it's you it's about you you know yeah. how how unique you are how what what kind of unique blueprint you are carrying you don't know yeah and all the great scientists by the way um, whether it's andrew hoffman it's uh, bruce lipton like neuroscientist they yeah. talk about this and more so where i come from india the gurus used to talk about it your mind your mind yes and how you can you know like all the veda scriptures the sanskrit the old language yes and used to talk about in sanskrit language uh, we call it ambras uh, brahmasmi which means i'm the universe so understanding of that is so deep now when i did all that i was like wow there's so much of knowledge over there wisdom basically yeah i would not call it knowledge it's a wisdom and scientifically it is known as emotional intelligence a neuroscience <laughs> <laughs> that's it and but the spirituality and science is so much interconnected yes it is so fascinating to see that yes right so i would strongly advise those people just acknowledge it number 2 is adopt it now people would say why that word adopt uh why not any other word i would say in my book also i wrote about it adopt has such a nurturing feeling to it like being a woman we are all very familiar with it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we are, you know if i say adopt it's like first thing comes to your mind is a child and you're just you know embracing and hugging them so you have to be very gentle about it right yeah so it's adopt you know adopt embrace it Okay, wow. Okay, I could. Like somebody when told me I could be an author and I said, "Okay, yeah, yeah, sure." <laughs> and now I see, wow, what they knew what I didn't. Wow. And I could like tell my message and how it could impact other people's in the positive way. Yeah. So second is adopted. Because adoption has such a positive connotation of word. Yeah, it's loving. It's, it's loving, it's nurturing. Yeah. Right? So first if you have done your acknowledgement which is going to be the most <laughs> the the I would say the longest or the shortest for it depends how you are part of you and then next step would be adoption the third would be the most um, I think important one is approval now you see wow you have done it okay and a scientist would always see that too for in me I have a scientist as well right I I try to struggle with it I adopted it now I see okay now I getting results yes because my scientist part is always up right so I mm -hmm. cannot leave my logical behind mind somewhere yes so when I started doing it practicing it and people started coming in and they uh, got the value from it so I said okay now you are getting approved still an external word you know from the external validation but that's what it is yeah and the approval comes when you have started taking the action now right like yeah. that uh, the family i was telling you about the change well, my true. you can't get the approval unless you take the action correct yeah okay that is like very that. powerful understanding right yeah yeah and and mind you uh, everybody please you have to be logical as well be assertive have yeah. a balanced mind don't just go one way or the other have a perspective about it but have a balanced mind like i said you have to embrace it in a way that you are not you know completely tilting over one side mm -hmm. like i said before approval like action you said i had to take actions to know whether if this is the direction i'm trying to pursue it yeah be very careful like because people come they just leave everything sometimes and they just don't do anything about it no you have to be very mindful and mindful literally means in any sense that your both sides the logical mind which is like left side of your brain and your right side of your brain which is creativity are balanced then you're talking a different sense when you've integrated both of them yes so do see like if you are planning to do something in your life do see try it out and see how it is changing you and other people 
just don't do it blindly do you research well so the acknowledgement was also research at that time yeah and the second phase like second step is when you're completely embracing it you have made up your minds so to speak yeah and third is your approval yes and approval from yourself and as well as the world i love it that's great but these yeah. are the three a's i would tell anybody who is going through any journey just write it down and just see how they're working out for you yeah no that totally makes sense and i love how easy you're making that for us to remember so <laughs> as you. we're going through life we can um uh you know easily navigate through that mm-hmm. fairly simply um but the first step is figuring it out exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. figure it out first and that's the difficult one because you're you know the the world is going to pull you in different directions that in that first stage acknowledge yeah. right but it's okay you have to go through it yeah we all do you have to show your triumph like you said over all your fears and understanding of it yeah and it nothing's handed to us you know i think that a lot of people get a misconception of you know anything that's supposed to be ours is just handed to us easily exactly that's, yeah exactly. that's not a thing you have to dig for it you have to look for it you have to search internally externally right. for right. you know the things that um when we're looking for our passion right i think you said it it's very educational right when something is given you someone is giving you the structure the steps to follow i love it it's very educational right yeah but what we are talking about it's little outside the education yes still it's a part of education by the way i want to clear it to every one of your viewers we are talking about literally neuroscience here but how it is put across to you because what happens when you're following the structured life very structure okay sabrina get up 7 am do 8 am 9 am you're following a routine just yeah. look at you you would not would not even get a chance to acknowledge your feelings your emotions your behaviors yeah which are submerged into your subconscious mind yeah and they are 90% of there over there only 10% is your conscious mind where you are operating from yes but when they come up when they come up to the surface most of them are negative in nature and unfortunately you get attached to them yeah yeah and most of the time when people say they come with a negative thought as a why are you paying so much of attention to those negative thoughts they are a distraction but you have to mm-hmm. learn to look at them in different way and then once you start to realize those subconscious nudges thoughts your intuition whatever you want to call it they start to make sense yeah and when you're able to understand the whole science behind it why you're thinking the way you are what you're planning to do what you're going to do with lot of integrity please i'm putting emphasis on word integrity you just don't do these things blindly you want to know things right the right way yeah yeah also not diving completely into the world of spirituality no following the science where it has shown data what it is beautiful you know what i'm saying yeah so these are the integrations which you actually have to understand and make yourself yeah this user said wow it's like a lean process of the mind a reconstructure mm-hmm. yes absolutely absolutely yeah. it's like completely understanding yourself the from the mind's perspective like i said the mind and the subconscious mind understanding why is it happening to you and you are full aware of it yeah you're not just following it blind you please don't do that yeah. just somebody says yeah so <laughs> again if you do that then again you're following the old patterns of yours yes if she's getting a yellow dress i'll get a yellow dress you know simple yeah if she's wearing a black dress i'll wear a black dress then you're following the pattern yeah you're again going back to that programming which subconscious mind of yours loves it because then it can manipulate you the way it wants definitely but once you integrate every part of yours and then you understand like i would not let you and then you understand it 
scientifically, then you say, okay, all right, let's 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 talk about it. Now, what are you trying to say? The negative thoughts no longer remain the negative thoughts. They become into a something where you're observing them. Like a lot of rishis, munis from India, when they used to go on the Himalayas to meditate, they only used to say one thing, become a observant, observe, wow. and don't react. Wow. Respond, don't react. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is so much. Yeah, there's yeah, a difference. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah. I so like, like I said, it's, it's an interesting, you know, phenomenon scientifically and spiritually, but you must know to strike the balance. That's the key to it. Yeah. I like what this user is saying in the middle. They're saying these are concepts more and more people need urgently given the present circumstances globally. Lovely yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I think this is uh, especially, like you said, if people can understand this, so there would not be any tug of war in a literal sense. Yeah. You know? Because if you're embracing your uniqueness, I'm embracing my uniqueness. This lady uh, who just commented embracing her uniqueness. Yeah. Hey, everybody has a different unique blueprint. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so the stories we talk about, there could be some similarities, but Sabrina is Sabrina, Gita is Gita. Yeah. You know? Definitely. But they could have similarities, but at the same time, they have a unique message to share in their yeah. own way, in their yeah. own style, if I may say. Yeah. You have a different style, I would have a different style. Yeah. But let's embrace each other's style and get the message out. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what this platform is all about. Exactly. <laughs> I wanna I wanna ask you, what's the number one lesson you've learned from your life? See, um, I think the number one, uh, what I had always been is very curious. Okay. You know? Yeah. And like I said, um, the curious mind uh is a very interesting one because you're trying to know things the way they not they are but you're trying to research more right so what i learned in my pharmacy school about like neuroscience the neuro pathways the new habits you form and all those things very scientifically and and rather um uh, probably connecting it to the life was the one of the greatest things i could do but Again, I said the curiosity is the lesson which should not be taken far as well. You know, curiosity and balance is great. Right? You just not go, uh, you should not just do things, okay, the other person is doing. You have to understand why do you want to do it first? Yes. So that is the biggest thing, because once you uh, are into a curious nature, which most of us are, because like so many are attending this uh, right now, the podcast, right? Yeah. So they want to know yeah. more. They're, so this is the curious nature you have. But that comes with a caution mind. How is it relating back to you? Like, again, the response to your own story of that mm -hmm. universe. Yeah. And how you can balance it when you want to. Just don't let flow it like that, you know, loosely in the world. Yeah. Definitely. So that's one of the greatest, I think, the lesson I've learned that you have to, and for that, you need a complete balance of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like not let one thing stretch you away in one direction and the other thing stretch you away in another direction. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of individuals, and I'm sure, you know, you deal with, with this with your clients is limiting beliefs. Yes. Um, I'd love to know what one of your biggest limiting beliefs was, you know, throughout your journey. Mm -hmm. And what did you change it to? What do you believe now? So, uh, like I said, my, I think I, I was, one of my limiting beliefs was that I could do this, but not this. Right? So, when I was doing one thing, I was only probably channelizing all my energy, if, energies, if I can say that, into one direction. Yeah. And I was boxing myself into those boundaries. So I think the open-mindedness, like in my first book, I said, 
So one of the things you could do is become open mindedness, you know, mm -hmm. at least see what it is. And then you try to understand, is it for you or not? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what I said, when the, for instance, I tell you how, when the life was showing me, you could do this, you could become an entrepreneur, you can help out people, you can help out women. I was not completely honest to myself. I was doing it, mm -hmm. but I was not honest. You know, I was not, I would say I was not, um, I was thinking, no, no, this is not for me. I was rejecting it a lot. Yeah. You know, literally. Yeah. In fact, one time I remember when I joined um, a women's club and they had uh, called me. It was like long time back, nine years, and I spoke on it. Because since the scientific knowledge I could give very easily, mind and neuropathways and talking about neuroplasticity and all those things, the big, big words, you know, kind yeah. of <laughs> So they were very comfortable to me. And I said, yeah, white people are not getting it. You know, oh, what am I saying? <laughs> so, and that time I was so much into that, literally, to be honest, you know? Uh, yeah. And I said, okay, this is what the life is. But I was not ready to open up. Makes sense? Yeah. But please, uh, one of the limiting beliefs, but when I, when one of the really good, I would say, mentor came and, uh, and I, I spoke about it. And then I realized as a coach, my own coach, when they told me, like, you can wear a couple of hats and some hats are very close to you. Mm -hmm. You can be a scientist. You are a mother. Mm -hmm. You are a spouse, whatever you want to name. So these are all different hats we are all wearing. Yeah. And one hat could be of something which is very close to you. Mm -hmm. Your passion, your purpose. So I would encourage a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ladies, like wear different hats if you can. Definitely. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay to wear sometimes be an open mind and be, it will show in your aura and your energy when you talk about it, you know, when you're yeah. talking about passion yeah. and purpose. Yeah. 100%. So that's the one of the limiting beliefs. But now I say, bring it on. I know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, please talk to me about anything. I can talk from as as simple as you want to talk about the wisdom, the spirituality to the science. So yeah. I can talk it all. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so that, that range has opened up big time for me. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm quite uh, grateful for that. That's so cool. I, uh, I want to acknowledge really fast our um, audience right now. We have people watching us live. I so appreciate you being here, supporting us and um commenting while we're speaking we always appreciate um you know the support here at the her version community uh, since we have um you know a large audience here hanging out with us Gita, i'd love for you to tell us what you do you know obviously they're here they're listening they're intrigued they're resonating with what you're saying so give us a little um rundown of you know what you do and what your business is and how you help humans okay so i'm um, I I would take an opportunity to say to thanks to all of them. Yeah. And um, now let's talk about the very um, logical part of it, the business. <laughs> we <laughs> talked all about, you know, kind of mind and everything, how it is came, the awareness. So the business, yes. So currently I'm a certified um, and uh, accredited from ICF. Uh, I'm a coach and I've become coach of uh, one thing was the mindset, the success mind. Because the mindset is very important, you know, because I thought the people talk about the success, but how they relate to the success is very important. It's about your mindset, you know, because yeah. when you talk success, it's like achieving a goal, a purpose or a name. It's simple. But when you talk about the mindset of yours, which is very important, you talk about the possibilities you're going to face while achieving that goal, purpose or your aim. Yeah. Yeah. And are you open to them or not? They could be bad and they could be good. Mm -hmm. So the mindset is all about knowing yourself so completely what I'm doing and why I'm doing. And even if I face the possibilities of failures into it, how am I looking at the failures about? And like I say, always say the failure is, is a success in progress. Ooh. So when you're looking at a failure, it's not a failure. How you can come out of it, again, embrace it and move yeah. on. Yeah. But a lot of us get stuck into that 
failure part of it and they don't they look at success either it's black or white yeah yeah i feel in it and so much so for the young community as well yeah the young children i was giving a workshop on young minds i was telling them as well don't have to feel bad don't have to feel shame about it if you failed into something get up and look for something else there's so many possibilities there exactly i would love to share this with wide audience of yours look at success you know as something is in your mindset and how you are going to be approaching in your future the second what i did was the strategic abundance mindset and so many my uh, uh women clients they have such big struggle with finances yeah i see that a lot i had that growing up yeah yeah and the way they look at finances is so much different they have been wired in their brain to look at finances differently yeah so i help them to navigate understanding of what finances are and also understanding what abundance really truly means to them and once you open up the channel uh, the the channel of abundance and finances you can see so many things flowing towards you not rather against you yeah so people have a very unfortunately my um like i had a client who was from uh, howard school she was a doctor from howard uh-huh. um law school and she had such a big challenge with that so once we opened up and once we tried to explain it to her what she was struggling with the like limiting beliefs and what she was thinking even after having that label to her she was not being successful so strategic abundance mindset is very important for every woman to understand Yeah. abundance does not mean literally money abundance again means a mindset definitely i can see that 100%